Hello and welcome to my deep guide and the big books guide. The tablet itself holds a lot of options but they can be actually sometimes hidden, difficult to find, so the aim of this entire guide and the playlist is to help you get the maximum out of your device. One of a couple of really really useful features that an Android platform has and something that I actually use quite a lot is uh, speech to text conversion and sometimes I also use text to speech. So let's cover those to see where can you set it up, what to be mindful of and yeah, what's the best way of using this. To begin with I am using Gboard because that one has the best uh, speech to text conversion as far as I'm concerned but that one does require and most that I'm aware of require you to have an online connection because it's done via the servers. The first thing that you need to do if you follow the directions of how to install the Gboard onto your books device, if you haven't, go back to that video, I think it was episode 3 or something like that, uh, do that one and then you can come back here so that you can follow. Now, if you already have Gboard installed and you're using it, the way to uh, set up your speech to text conversion is to go to languages. I'm gonna find my Gboard that's already assigned, press on the cog to get into settings, and in settings I have this one which is correlating to the icon that you use for voice typing voice typing options. Now, voice typing should be enabled or disabled depending on how you did it during the Gboard installation, but you, it has to be enabled for the functionality to work. Now, another thing that I would like you to be aware of is that usually these things are on by default. I turn them all off. Uh, voice contribution, data sharing and all that kind of stuff. So, it is a good idea to always go through any app's settings to find where the option is of the data that it's sharing so that you can disable it if that's what you want. That's usually what I do. So basically here I also can go into advanced settings and it says improve voice and typing for everyone. By default that would be I believe turned on but then you can turn it off and then uh, also share usage statistics. I also turn that one off. So this is Gboard setting specifics. I'm going a little bit on the side but it is related to voice typing. So now that you have that set up and at least some of the privacy parts a little bit uh, kind of remedied, now you have your device set up for voice typing. But how do we use it and how does it work? Well here I am in Google Keep so I'm just gonna start a new note and this is the icon that we are looking for. So this little microphone is voice typing and if everything is set up as we've talked about then I can start using my voice typing. So this is an example of me using the voice typing to type into my Google Keep note. Full stop. It is also possible to use comma. It is also possible to use exclamation mark. It is also possible to ask a question by using a question mark. Full stop. However, a question has to be made into a form of question. Full stop. Is this a question? Question mark. As you can see, it is actually possible to do proper dictation to the device itself with close to no corrections needed at all, but as any other tool, it is needed to delete, delete, delete. So you can actually start deleting stuff if you made a mistake. With close to no corrections needed to the typed input, comma, but as any other tool, you need to learn how to use it properly. Full stop. All right. So now that that's done, and if you don't want it to actually listen anymore, you just press on the icon and yeah, <laughs> basically delete the stuff that you don't want. So the only place, as far as I can see, there's only one word that was off 
and that one was here instead of but I said it's it recognized what and maybe I was unclear when I said it but still so for me this is an incredibly impressive way of capturing my thoughts and it does require a minimum amount of getting used to um, yeah, adding the punctuation and basically visualizing your thoughts with punctuation in mind in your head uh, so that you can speak it out when you're speaking but it's incredibly useful and incredibly productive so why do i use gboard well simply because i did not find any other uh, speech to text service that is as reliable as quick and as good as this one is and as you've seen it actually is taking uh, what you're saying in context so that's the AI side of things working because I was able to say it, it is also possible to ask a question by using a question mark. And it didn't think that question mark is now supposed to be a symbol. I was able to write question mark, but when I wanted to ask a question, which was again difficult because I said, is this a question question mark? And then he was able to actually recognize that. So, a very very useful way of doing things something that I use a lot and I think it boosts productivity if this is something that you want to do uh, quite quite a lot however be aware that it does require online connection for it to function now the other way around is also very very capable and very possible and extremely versatile meaning text-to-speech so that the device is actually reading um, reading a content to you and it is possible to configure it in different ways. We can go to settings, again into languages, and at the bottom we have text-to-speech output. And when you go to text-to-speech output, you can of course test out the how it sounds. So if I hit play, it's going to think a little. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. Right, so that's an example of speech synthesis in English. So you can make it go fast. This is an example of speech synthesis in English completely insanely fast right and the pitch can go this is an example of speech synthesis in english <laughs> i love doing that let's go this is an example of speech synthesis in english so you can actually break it down and then you can go all the way down this is an example of speech synthesis in english cool Anyway, so it can be a toy, it's really, really fun, but more importantly, it's actually extremely useful. There are different settings that you can use to customize your uh, voice to text experience. So there's a way of how the numbers are processed, intonation, language detection, anonymous user reports, of course, you gotta turn it off and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can install different voice data that can be downloaded from different sources, or if you already have it, you can install it there. Um, but you can also use different languages and by default it's using a system language but it has the support of a huge array of languages here how do you use it in a sentence or in reality so let's go to the neo reader so i can show you how that works so now we're in neo reader and when you're there you can always go to progress and you have this little icon here like the headphones and if you tap on it it will start the playbook. Subbase. Wicked Warp by Mandragora, 1993. The metric length of a unit is the same as in the previous example. But the length of three now clearly dominates over four. Like expressed by Butler to... You can pause, you can stop, you can resume, you can add, yeah, you can set more things around and you can add a timer so it actually reads to you uh, for a specific set amount of time, which is between 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90 minutes and infinity. Another thing that you can actually use is you can press play, to let it read, go to your notebooks. 16. And then take notes while it's actually reading. The concept reading. of metric projection can again be taken into use and said that the line is instead projecting an embedded G four thirds grouping dissonance. In some cases of this study, this concept it's an operation that per persists in the background as well, which is incredibly useful. So it is something that can be definitely used as a productivity tool as well. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and that you've learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and like the video and ding the notification bell thingy to get notified when the new videos are coming out and when the new Big Books Guide chapters are coming out because they will be coming. There's lots more coming. Also, be sure to check back regularly on the Big Books uh, playlist so that you can, yeah, browse the content and find the answer that you might be looking for there. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!